but you know, you take a 60 bed nursing home, three meals a day, that's 180 meals a month and 5,400, no, 180 meals a day, 5,400 a month and 64,800 a year, just in a 60 bed nursing home. And the way a lot of us do it, there's all this pre-time, getting them there, the parade, and then waiting, and then eating, and then waiting, and then going back. Could be two hours each meal. Six hours out of the day. I want to be able to eat when I want to eat, where I want to eat, and and uh, even if I don't wish to eat at all. And I want it to be like on a cruise ship. That's the hardest one to fix, the most difficult one, because it requires so much imagination of restructuring of so many things to make that happen. But it's important. Six hours out of my day, Think about it. Meal time is a special time. It's not a nutritional event. <coughs> okay. It's a social event. And the more money you spend at the restaurant, the longer you stay. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and the fellowship is what lives forever. I had a great meal with a lot of friends last night and and I will remember the, the food a little bit. It was really good. But I'll remember the fellowship much longer. Our kids, I have five kids. Two from uh, first marriage and three from another. The, other, the three of girls have called me daddy for 17 years. And uh, I've always had them from age five on to turn off the TV, everything. And we had at least one meal every day together, whether it was at a restaurant or at home. And uh, we had great times. It was a so every meal, social event. And they always waited for my question, okay, what was the highlight of the day? And they'd all start talking at once. It was great. I will miss that. escaping. Trust me. <laughs> if I'm in your home, I am an escape risk. <laughs> you will redefine restraints. <laughs> when and how to use them. Uh, and I want to go where I want to go and do what I want to do and Go in every restricted area possible and sneak out of your place as much as I can. <laughs> as long as I have my wits, I will celebrate each time I make it. <laughs> and if you can't find me, I'll come back and say, see, I got out, you didn't find me. <laughs> you get claustrophobic. And, uh, not to be able to see a pasture or a field or a stream or a mountaintop ever again would be really tough. I was a consultant on building a nursing home in Tucson, outside, 60 miles outside Tucson, Arizona on an Indian reservation, the Hoda Odom Indian Reservation. They have all this casino money and after they build a school and a police station, a lot of other things, they finally decided they had a lot of money left over and they should build a world-class nursing home. And I was fortunate enough to be on the consulting team, the feasibility team, to put that together. And uh, my job, one of them, I made seven or eight trips out there, got to know the Native Americans really well. and. So I went into Tucson where the Indians uh, went uh, for nursing home care. And it was one of two nursing homes and one in particular, and that's the one I went to. And because of the diet in Pima County and, and the uh, diabetics and the and, uh, horrible uh, conditions there that uh, over half of them had amputations. 
and they had to wheel them in this room. And none of these elderly people spoke English, zero. And I had a translator who was a, a healer, a medicine doctor, if you will. And uh, he was a great guy. And he helped translate for me. And I asked them, we're going to build this nursing home out here on the reservation. Where do you want it and what do you want to have in it? And they all just, just overwhelmingly said, we want to see our sacred mountain every day. Okay, that's most important to us. And we want to be able to sit out on the patio and feel the breeze. Make that happen for us, we'll be happy. And boy, we did. If you're ever out on that Indian reservation, I've been there three times since it's built. It is world class. That casino money, every time you gamble, just think, hey, this is going to help somebody. <laughs> because you'll probably lose a lot. And they have all this open window. And there's their sacred mountain, and I forget the name of it. I should, surely should remember. And there's a large patio. And they have, it's really great. I would go to Arizona, but they don't have marijuana laws. <laughs> the nursing home in Columbia, Missouri, there was a Red Hat Society, right? You know the Red Hat? Nursing home decided they had to cut the transportation budget, and the Red Hats didn't get to go out to their restaurant in the community. And I had gone with them previously on their outing, one of the outings. Oh my god, it hoot. It was so much fun, and it was, they, ah, talk about a lie. These ladies, by golly, and they talk dirty. It was really sad. <laughs> <laughs> they lost that transportation. They lost all that fellowship. And they lost part of their lives as a result. Let's kind of combine what I just said. Um, and a lot of church members, including myself, would visit him in the beginning of his stay. And like everybody else, you tend to forget, you know? And I felt guilty because every time I drove home, I drove by that nursing home and I could even see Dawson there in the lineup in that nursing home. And I knew I could load him up, I thought, in my car and take him out for a ride. And one day, the guilt got me so much. I went through, got into that nursing home, made it through the gauntlet, got to Dawson, found him, said, Dawson, it's David. Where have you been? You know, that didn't help my guilt. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Dawson. I just, I just, you know, forgot about you. <laughs> Well, that's a hell of a note. And I said, well, you want to get out of here? What? You want to get out of here? God, let me take you for a ride. I'll take you out to your farm. Can you get it? Can you leave? He said, I, I don't think so. I don't think they'll let me out of here. And you're not family. I said, they won't know that. And uh, yes. And so I went and said, I would like to take Dawson Trimble out for a ride. They said, who are you? And I said, I'm his minister. <laughs> they never ask for a card. <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> oh, sure, that's just wonderful. You know? <laughs> so I sign him out, and we go out. And we have a great time. And I won't go into the, took him through a car wash. Scared the shit out of him. <laughs> took him to a bank through the window and took him out to his farm. We sat there and I had to watch him tear up. That was tough. But he loved it and I waited until he had enough. And then we're driving back and he said, uh, I said, is there anywhere else you want to go, Dawson? He said, yeah, the grocery store. 
said, all right. So we go to the grocery store. Now, that was, you know, getting the wheelchair out, that's a lot of trouble. And I'm wheeling him down the aisle. Some old uh, civic organization friend saw him and looking at him like, like, I didn't know you were alive. Hi, Dawson. I, well, uh, and of course, self-righteously, I'm standing there smiling. You know. <laughs> so what do you want, Dawson? He says, cookies. Oreo cookies. OK. So he gets these cookies. He gets them. I get them off the shelf. And he hides them under his blanket. I think, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may be in trouble here. <laughs> I said, Dawson, you're going to have to put those on top of the blanket. We do have to pay for them. But his hiding them was a clue. We get the cookies. We check out. I get him back to the nursing home, and he's quiet. And I, and I think maybe he's sad. And I'm going back. I said, Dawson, uh, sorry i got to bring you back to the nursing home. Uh, and then it hit me. I said, Dawson. You're not supposed to have the cookies, are you? <laughs> he said, no. Well, I said, I, I guess that means we'll have to sneak them in. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and we did. It was great. We hid those little devils, and we got in there, got back to his room, and immediately wheels over to the chest and is hiding them in his drawer. You know how you find them under the underwear. Yeah. Dance all over them. Yeah, you know, I'm proud that I did that, by the way. <laughs> I got ready to go, and, I, and this ties into what I said earlier. I said, Dawson, I'm sorry, I'll try to come back more often. And I did, by the way. And I've had as much fun today as I've ever had. And he said, thanks, David. And he started to, uh... oh, and I said, and I know what to bring next time. I'll bring some cookies. And he started crying. And this is a man who's very tough. German type and he, not a crier and so it's kind of tough being there with him as he did this and uh, and through the tears I just let him cry and he finally said D I don't I don't want the cookies I just want you just want you he said it's been the greatest day since I've been here Got him out of the home. It was a great day. <laughs> it says that if I'm able to masturbate, I want to if I'm able. <laughs> Last uh, year, when were we, were we in Sonoma? Was that? Yes. When was it? 50 Fall? year ago. This yeah. year? 50 year ago. Uh, I did a, a program on sexuality and intimacy. How many were there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How things going? <laughs> In that, I, I pointed out, uh, gave you all those statistics, and one of the most interesting ones to me was that 55% of uh, men over 65 masturbate and 55% of women over 65 masturbate whether they have a partner or not. A lot of tension relief, you know, pretty therapeutic, and yet, and pretty serious stuff. I will tell you a horrible thing I might have done, although it's very consistent with my personality. <laughs> <laughs> After my third chemo treatment, uh, you see, the, in these 21 days between treatments, the the last four days, in these 21 days, you feel pretty good because you're recovering from the treatment itself. And there's, you have those moments of good, I mean, it's really, you, you feel, you think you'd rather be dead there in the middle and, and for about two weeks, but uh, the first four days when you're on steroids and you feel you can climb mountains, that's great. And the last four days are really good in the first four or five treatments. And so after the third treatment, we're down and we took advantage of those times and we still take advantage of every day and I urge you to. We went to Las Vegas and Tucson and on a four-day cruise two times and uh, had a good time. We, we've had made value use of that time. Well the third time we're down in Tucson and I said I'm gonna call my medical oncologist. He's a 
fourth year fellow and I kind of like him and but he's so formal. He's an Indian, you know, and yes, yes, Dr. Oliver, yes, you know, and very good, answers all my questions, very sharp, but very formal, and I, I, that makes me nervous. <laughs> I like people who be far more human than that. So here I am in Tucson, and I called him up, and I said, I got him on the phone, and I called him by his first name. That always, I think, bothered him, too. I said, Robbie, <laughs> it's David, I'm down in Tucson, Arizona. Should I go buy some condoms? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> this is great. I said, I said, Robbie, you there? I said, you know, I got these nasty chemicals in my body, and I don't want to put those in my woman. <laughs> Who knows what the what they'll do to her? I haven't bought condoms in a long time. I'm a little nervous about it, but I think maybe I better go get some because I think things that might happen tonight. <laughs> I brought some Viagra to make sure. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> and finally, he says, uh, 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 David, you're OK. You're OK. <laughs> so what do you mean, I'm OK? He said, um, that's really, if, if, uh, if Debbie was 24 years old and if she were pregnant, it'd be a serious problem. Or, but, but you're not, and uh, I think you're just fine. I said, well, I think we ought to include this in patient education time. <laughs> <laughs> and I made him as nervous as I could. <laughs> he no longer holds his arms this way <laughs> with me. And I think I've contributed a lot to his professional career. <laughs> <laughs> Sexuality is important. Intimacy is important. It's not just social, emotional. It's, it's physical, and it's all of that that we've all experienced and enjoy and uh, makes life a drama, too. And to, and to think that an elderly person uh, can't enjoy that is a huge mistake, which is why I'm did that presentation, you know, out in California. So I want privacy. That means you got to train your staff. And I told you the story out in California. The nurse's aide came in, slapped a man who was, no, a woman, a woman who was masturbating. Told her she's going to hell and some crazy religious bullshit. And, and uh, big mistake. <laughs> Her son was one of the leading attorneys in San Antonio, mm. and she was very alert and very open and very liberal. And CN, uh, CNA was fired that day. Uh, one of my students found her working somewhere else in another nursing home three weeks later. I'm in your home, don't slap my hand. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else I'm <laughs> Boredom. I really worry about being bored. When I took my grandmother in to admit her to a nursing home, by the way, you need to know my grandmother's like Sophia on Golden Girls and explains a whole lot about me because it's my grandmother that reared me. And she, even though my mother was in the home, I was closest to my grandmother. She always listened to my story, regardless of how gruesome and horrible it might be. And I listened to hers. We were close, and uh, she was fun. You'd, she, at age 90, she had a little stroke, went in the emergency room, and these paramedics were trying to take out her teeth. She was always proud of the fact that she always had her own teeth. But here they are, trying to take them out. <laughs> and she said, they're mine! <laughs> and the paramedic said, she must be delirious. And so she bit him really bad. <laughs> See? <laughs> you would have liked my grandmother. She was special. Episcopal priest showed up one day. They had communion. You'd like this, David. And, and the priest made the big mistake after communion of stopping at the door and saying, is there anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Bush? She said, there sure is. Leave the wine. <laughs> She 
She's good. She's neat lady. So I got her in this wheelchair and we're going down and I guess as a well-meaning activity director comes up and wanting to help and comes up behind me and says, now Mrs. Bush, you're going to really like it here with us. Now, I think we'll just go right on down to where everybody's playing bingo. Bingo, <laughs> she says. The hell with bingo. We are not playing bingo. And she never did. I like bingo, don't worry. <laughs> Activities will not do it for me. Sorry. Maybe poker parties with some marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Wheelchair races. I don't know. You just got to get imaginative because what we got going now is not going to do it. And weekends when everybody's gone and at nighttime it's really boring. Yes, that's when most people visit, but not everybody gets visited. I worry about boredom because I think that can lead to depression and lead to me to want to end it. One night, spending the night in a nursing home with my class, uh, Arthur Moore was in my roommate, 85 years old, and we'd shared a story, and we'd gotten to know one another, and finally I, I said, Arthur, I could use some advice from an old man like you. Well, what is it? I said, my father uh, committed suicide, and I, this had to happen recently. And before I could say another word, he said, did they tell you about me? I said, Arthur, I did not mean to upset you. Well, I've tried to kill myself twice since I've been in here. Actually, it's been three times, but they don't know about the third time. <laughs> he taught me a lot about life. I dedicated that book I mentioned that I wrote to my grandmother and to Arthur Moore. He died 30 days later of a uh, natural causes. He was a poor man. Uh, we had a, what do you call it, pauper. We raised money and we had a county burial. It was a great service. Ten of us. Mostly nurses' aides and me and chaplain and the activity director. It is good. So worry about boredom. So what are we going to do about some of these maybe 